Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. These words shall be in thine heart. Teach them diligently unto thy children. Talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way. Bind them for a sign upon thine hand. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Write them upon the posts of thy house. This is Families of Faith. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Families of Faith. My name is Tim Rumsey. Stacy, my wife, is with me. And today, what are we going to talk about? We are talking about parenting pitfalls. There's a lot of those, aren't there? <laughs> yes. This might, we might have more than enough content. <laughs> we may have two or three episodes on this eventually. But uh, this was what came to our minds uh, quickly as we were looking at our own experiences. Right, exactly. We've, we've made a few pitfalls, and I'm sure others have too, and hopefully we can gain some help and encouragement today. Yeah, we won't claim to have the perfect answer for all of these. No. Um, but they are things we've realized that we need to pay attention to and that we need to look out for. Yes. All yes. right. Well, let's start with a word of prayer. Okay. Father in heaven, as we share some of our own experiences and look at some counsel from the Bible also uh, regarding pitfalls that we as parents want to avoid, I ask that you would uh, help us to share it in a way that will make sense. And uh, Lord, bless and be with all the families mm -hmm. that will be listening or watching that uh, they may benefit as well. We pray mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, these are in no particular order, although I think a couple at the beginning might uh, apply more toward those early stages of parenting. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they just, it's kind of random as they came to us. That's right. Okay, what's the first one we have? Okay, failing to plan for parenting before children come along. And I think this is... Um, easy to have happen. You know, you're excited about your marriage and where you're living and all of the things that come with that. And all of a sudden, and sometimes it can be a surprise, <laughs> you've got a baby coming along, which is exciting. You, a lot of times moms tend to prepare the room. So physical things, um, you know, get the supplies needed, that sort of thing. But maybe tend to forget the preparation that needs to to happen for how you're actually going to raise these precious little ones that God has entrusted you with. It's uh, one of the cruel injustices of the world that you can have a baby and there's no requirement mm. that you go through some training or education, right? Mm. Um, even a lot of marriages will start with um, marriage counseling. Yeah, although I don't know if we want the government or anything mandating how we prepare for parenting. I am not <laughs> suggesting that they should. No, to but be clear. I, I understand what you're saying too. I'm, I was trying to draw a comparison, right? Yeah. So we often, as we're growing up, we think a lot about what am I going to be? What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And so you go to school for yes. maybe two years, maybe four years, maybe eight or 12 years mm -hmm. to prepare for that. Um, even marriage, you'll often have a few weeks of marriage counseling, maybe a couple of months. But having a baby, you can just dive into it without any any thought. You've got <clears throat> nine months to prepare, mm -hmm. and um, then bam, here you are. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty-eight. Jesus is not talking about parenting explicitly, but he is talking about the importance of planning ahead. So he says, "Which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost?" whether he have sufficient to finish it. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. now once that baby, you know it's coming, mm -hmm. uh, that should be a one-way road, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're not turning around and saying, oh, well, maybe I'm not ready. No. But w we should be planning ahead and trying to prepare ourselves uh, mentally and in other ways. So what are some of the things, things that it would be do. wise for mm -hmm. soon-to-be parents to think about? Okay, well, first, I was just going to make a quick comment on the fact that it would even be best to prepare before you're pregnant with the baby because those months are really crucial um, for your attitude and your, your um, which I know is tricky because your, your hormones are changing and so forth, but you want to keep a cheerful um, 
outlook on life mm-hmm. during that time because all of those things affect your baby you know think of your health so that your that your baby's getting proper nourishment and all of that and so anyways i was just gonna say <laughs> and not to embarrass my wife oh no but uh we were married for about three and a half years before our first child came along and you spent a lot of that time thinking and planning at least in your mind oh yeah i'm trying to remember we owned a minivan before we even knew we were having a kid Uh uh-oh we're giving our secrets away (laughs) (laughs) yes uh, i was very excited about it yes but i'm thankful that you especially were so focused on preparing and planning and that doesn't mean that you're not going to be surprised by some things that's going to happen But you too, we sat down and did the child guidance book together, poured through that, wrote notes. Um, we still need to keep going through that. Went through book. a short seminar that yes, some friends we were did. sharing. Yes, we did. It was yeah. excellent. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so back to your question. Financial planning would mm. be one huge area, right? How are you going to afford children? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what are you going to do uh, when the child arrives? Are you is one of you going to stay home and and watch the child, or do you have to have child care? Um, and that brings you to the parents' roles, the husband's mm-hmm. roles, the wife's roles as um, in family. What does that look like? What are and, you? Deciding? And there's a lot of counsel given in the Bible mm-hmm. and other places about. Um, Uh, good ways to do that Mm -hmm. and there's some warnings about less good ways to Mm -hmm. do it and we'll let them we'll leave that right there since we have a full (laughs) full thing and we really really would encourage you to study that out more too how about schedules and routines Mm -hmm. yes um that's certainly helpful i mean i think you and i started trying to do family worships before we had children did we not because we knew we wanted to do that with children and we needed to start the habit together before we had children in order to be doing it and making sure that would happen. And that's an important point. If you want a habit in place for yourself or your marriage or your family, do your best to lay the groundwork for those habits as soon as possible. Because once kids arrive, um, uh, it does change your life. And you know it's gonna be very difficult to start a brand new type of habit if you weren't able to do it before kids. Mm -hmm. But it's not too late if you didn't start. That's right, it's always Never too late, God can help you. But yes, you're you're tired, you're doing the baby duty in the night when you, and hopefully not for too long. Now Um, something that was very helpful to us was uh, learning about the feed, wake, sleep cycle. Mm -hmm. Yes, and not, and I'll just jump ahead a little bit, not having um, unhelpful sleep props or really any sleep props for your children so that they can learn to put themselves to sleep and sleep through the night as quickly as possible because that helps your whole family to function better. So what's a sleep prop? Well, it's anything. It's a binky, whatever they want to call them, a pacifier that you, you know, who's going to re-bink tonight once it falls out and they're crying, you have to go back in and put it in. Or um, sound or um, what else? Anything in the mouth, in the hand, in the crib, in the room, <laughs> or in the environment, right, that the child becomes has, reliant on. They cannot go to sleep unless mm-hmm. it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Has that thing. I know. That's hard because there are We're gonna things. We're going to get some, some mail on this one, I, know. I think. <laughs> there are things. You know, there's a special blanket or there's a special this or that. I get it. I, I know. And we have but, used sound makers to help mm-hmm, at times. Mm-hmm. But that was actually so, when the kids were a little bit older. older yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just helping them learn how to put themselves to sleep without having to have a certain thing. And it is difficult. So at least with one of our children, <clears throat> when, when uh, the child came home, uh, for the first time, there were a few nights there mm. right at the beginning, and it's tough. This is where dad comes in really handy because mom's heart gets so soft, like my baby's crying, my baby needs something. And once you've checked all of their needs, like, um, you know, diaper changes. You do, you do check the needs. You yes, make sure. of course, you must. Um, diaper changes, and did they get enough to eat or drink? Is there something poking them or, you know, anything, just making sure they, their needs are met. And then you would tell me, okay. The you, child will be fine. Yes. Set a timer because a mm-hmm. minute feels like an hour to a mom. <laughs> but here's how it worked. The first night was very hard and we 
basically didn't get any sleep and there was a lot of crying. Mm -hmm. The second night was a little bit better. Mm -hmm. The third night was much better. And by the time we were, I don't know if it was four or five nights, but it wasn't many. And, and once the baby's born, you mean? Yeah, well, or once, we once they came home Oh, and well, you, you, you checked their needs, but you let them cry it out. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now, it got much easier after that first four or five days. I will say days. there is this, they have to eat until a certain time. Yes. So we might be forgetting, you know, they have to nurse or if you're bottle feeding or whatever, um, because babies when they're really little can't go real long. So that's part of the tiredness for the mom is they're up doing that. But, um, yeah, once they're able to go longer without that, then you can really expect. So maybe it wasn't right away. Yeah, it wasn't right it's away. It's all a blur in my mind, right? <laughs> <clears throat> but no, the, the goal is as soon as possible so that your family can um, function well. Mom and dad have to be fresh to be good parents. Now, a big one here, and then we'll have to move on because <clears throat> we're not just yes. talking about sleep props here, but uh, it's very easy for the child, if you bring the child into your bed or even your bedroom mm -hmm. and the kid is getting used to, they can only go to sleep if they're right by your side. Mm -hmm. That is a really tough one to break. Yep, and it, that's not the best for the marriage. The marriage is first, right? And you wanna protect the marriage bedroom. And so, yeah, be really careful about that. Well, and that ties into one of the other points we had here is another pitfall is mm -hmm. putting your children before your spouse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that can happen in many ways. But the marriage relationship has to remain the first and the primary relationship in the home. I guess I'd say second to God, but first course, in the after home. God, yes. of, of human relationships. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, kids have a very mm, keen sense <laughs> of mm -hmm. becoming aware that uh, maybe they're becoming more important than the spouse. And that actually will often create in the child what um insecurity insecurity that's the word mm -hmm. yes and so the kids have to know that this relationship between mom and dad is rock solid i don't know at what age or if there's an age where the child can really uh, verbalize that they want your relationship first i'm not sure if they could do that but i believe they do and with you know if that relationship is solid in their minds then they are secure and happy um, we missed one back up on the preparing for parenting um, discipline philosophy, too. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. That's an important one. Very important one that both parents mm -hmm. really need to be on the same page with that. Study it out together and get on the same page because yeah. they will quickly divide and conquer if you don't have that figured out together. That's right. Okay. Um, here's another big one, and that is another parenting pitfall is hiding or ignoring conflict resolution. Mm, yes. Um, there, conflict is a part of this life because people have different ways of viewing things. And so there, there are going to be conflicts, period. Um, so when there is, how do we deal with it so that the kids um, can learn how to? And there are different ways that, you know, parents will view this. <clears throat> Um, you know, some parents will say, well, we don't want our kids to see any conflict mm -hmm. between us um, because we don't want to worry them or concern them. And uh, while that is not necessarily a bad reasoning, um, kids have to learn how to deal with conflict in healthy mm -hmm. ways. So we don't want them to see unhealthy conflict resolution, right? Right. <laughs> that can leave scarring and, and trauma for sure. Mm -hmm. For example, just a really simple word to help conflict resolution would be, I'm sorry. And when they see us not doing something right, they need to hear that resolution that, you know, one of us has acted up and that we took responsibility for me and my, my bad. And I say, I'm sorry I did that. And we've had to do that, haven't we? <laughs> Several times. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes we do it at worship time. You know, before we start worship, you know, mommy just needs to say, I'm really sorry. I acted like that or I did that. And you've done it I've too. I've said it too. Yeah. And there's different mixes of personalities. And we're not saying there's only one exact way to do this. But, you know, children do need to see how you a healthy it. adult relationship gets through issues and disagreements and problems. If they mm -hmm. never see that, 
talked out, worked out. Um, it's a tool in their toolkit mm -hmm. that isn't going to be as sharp as it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to experience conflicts in their lives. And so how do they resolve them? Yeah. So that's something good to work through. Okay, what's the next one here? Okay, um, flattering instead of encouraging and complimenting. This is a, a fine line. It is a fine it? line. <laughs> uh, flat is it, first of all, is it good to say to our kids they do something well? They need <laughs> encouragement. They need um, appropriate praise. Mm -hmm. um, it is easy for any of us as human beings um, because of our sinful fallen nature, we latch on to praise and certainly we latch on to flattery. <clears throat> and so we as parents need to be really careful that yes, we're encouraging, we're praising our kids. They, they need to hear and know the, of our approval for them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. But we also need to be careful that that doesn't turn or cross the line into just hollow flattery or praise. Mm -hmm. um, and we never, what, allow them to recognize that there's still room for growth, perhaps. Yeah, or they get out into the real world and they're like, well, I learned at home that I was like this. How come they don't think I'm like this? Right. <laughs> or What's wrong with them? <laughs> yeah, so this is a tricky balance. Um, what do they say? That for the daughters, they get their... Self-worth. Oh, Self-worth. We better not try to say that. I better look that up before I make a statement. <laughs> but anyways, I know that there's, for a daughter, um, the dad really gives them. They need to hear that mm -hmm, approval. That approval. Like they're going to end up looking, you know, finding a man in their life. And the man in their life growing up needs to let them know how beautiful they are and how, um, how good they are at different things and how much they're loved and so forth. But yeah making sure that we don't go over the line into too much praise and flattery to where they become shocked when they enter the real world <laughs> that, that they're not who they thought they were. And that, I, I think that that probably varies and, and shifts as the child grows, mm -hmm. right? When they first are learning to draw, you're gonna praise them just for scribbling on the paper. You, mm -hmm. you wanna encourage that. Um, if they're 15 and they're still scribbling and you're saying, oh, Tommy, that's so beautiful. Good job. <laughs> right. You know, something's wrong there. And so <clears throat> I think there's room for some shifting in that. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking about the girl with her dad. What about the boys? There's probably something with the mom, but both. I mean, I don't want to go too much on that because yeah. obviously they need to know from both parents that they're worth something. And not just because we tell them that, but because they are in God's sight. God created them. They are, yeah. he did perfect job. Well, mom, you have to say that, right? Because yeah. you're mom. Or... Yeah, and that is, that is partly what they'll think. Yeah. But, but um, from, from God's perspective, he made you, he doesn't make mistakes, and made you perfectly. Okay, okay. so uh, another parenting pitfall that I'm sure we've all done at times but it's comparing your children to other children in but, front of them, yeah. right? Telling them, well, why can't you be like so-and-so or uh, so-and-so? Whether that's siblings mm -hmm. or other children outside the home, it doesn't matter. Both is pretty detrimental. Yeah. Are we doing that? I hope not. Oh, I know one thing that we've tried to be really conscious of, I'm not saying we're always doing it right, but is to help them recognize that within the family, you're going to have sibling A doing something really well that sibling B can't do, and vice versa. And in other words, there's, there's some are going to excel in areas and others not. And so recognizing that it's okay to excel at something. Be happy for your sibling. You'll be good at this. They won't be as good at You know, we each have strengths and weaknesses. And, and one of the sad realities, I think, that we all face as we grow up, we are going to recognize those differences and the children are going to, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to teach them how to do this, they're going to compare themselves mm -hmm. with their siblings or their friends. 
But if they're hearing that reinforced from the parent, yes. then you've got some real damage that's going to happen. Right. So we don't want to accentuate what's already going to be a natural thing. That's right. And uh, yeah, just especially pointing out what they are good at and what somebody else is good at. And they need to be okay with that. You, you aren't going to be an Olympian at everything. <laughs> There's always going to be somebody better than you. You have to get used to that. You know, try your best and all and g encourage them. But we're not all good at all things. So they have to learn that too. Now, this next one is related to this, but it's more focused on what we do as parents. We can compare ourselves to other parents or other families. Mm. And whether we verbalize that to our kids or not, we can end up um, getting ourselves in a pretty bad place, mm -hmm. emotionally perhaps, mm -hmm. um, by comparing ourselves to how the, you know, why can't our family be like that family? Because they seem to have it all together. Yeah, and um, this can be, I don't want to say only for the mom, but I think the mom really does struggle with this one. Um, I think the dad does maybe in different ways. Like I've heard you say things like, I don't want to see that greenhouse, so I'm going to feel bad about ours <laughs> or something like that. Lawn envy. <laughs> <laughs> Lawn envy. Anyway, so I think there is in different ways, but as moms, like, uh, the family related stuff, we were probably easy to look over there and think, oh, I should be doing that, that and that. And I'm falling short. And, and social media has exacerbated this mm. tendency that we have. Yeah, not always very it's made healthy. It too easy to compare. Right. Let's be careful of that. I can't do too much of it. Just yeah. a little. <laughs> so we wanted to share a Bible verse on this. Um, just because it's it hits the nail on the head. Second Corinthians mm -hmm. 10 verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Mm -hmm. That's pretty clear and straightforward. Mm -hmm. Good advice. Yeah. Let's keep that standard with Jesus and let him bring us up to his level. Don't look at others. They have other issues. <laughs> <laughs> we all have issues. Now, if we are comparing or doing some of these unhealthy things, we can easily end up provoking our children. And this mm. is another parenting pitfall. Yes. It doesn't just come from comparing. comparing. Yeah, There's I was going to say that. Many ways we can provoke our kids. Yeah, this is kind of, to be honest, this is kind of a tricky one for me uh, because I recognize that we it's not good to provoke our children. But where is the balance on this? <laughs> like, obviously, if they're doing something that's not good and we have to correct... Because the Bible also tells us, be not easily provoked. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. there's the flip side to that yes. of receiving correction and And, and there advice. is the, the very famous verse, train up a child. You know, it's our job to train. So how do you train and not provoke? It's tricky. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say that I understand it all perfectly, feeling our <laughs> way on that one. But especially as our kids get older, um, they let us know when they need more freedoms. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Is that just me? I have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just whether it's doing their own hair now or doing their, you know, just they let us know. And once they are able, you kind of have to let them do that and step back. Yeah, if, if they reach that stage where they're ready for the, the next set of freedoms and you continue to withhold it, that could end up provoking them. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some other things we have on our list, actually, that might help illustrate this. Okay. And that is having unrealistic expectations mm. for our kids. If we express or act out these unrealistic expectations, it's going to end up provoking our kids, whether we mean to or not. Good point. And for, for one real specific um, example, you don't want them to feel like they have to do everything perfect or to be perfect. You want them to learn how to do a good job at something, but not that you are expecting perfection in everything. Yeah. Right? So, uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Another type of unrealistic expectation would be to be viewing our kids as clones of us and treating mm -hmm. them like, such right mm. so well i enjoyed doing this or this was my hobby or this is the way my family did it when i grew up and so this is the way we must do it or you must i'm going to transfer it to you yeah. and expect that of you that'll provoke your kids probably mm -hmm. they're not you they have different goals and interests and not perhaps. viewing or treating our kids as robots mm -hmm. and we've discussed this at times uh, where we've 
explain something or tried to give correction in some area. Explain the reason why. Yeah, maybe. and then it's just, it's not clicking as fast as we wish. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we've had to remind ourselves that, well, our kids are not robots. It's not going to just happen overnight. It's going to be a process. You know, <laughs> if they were, you could say the right thing and program it just the right way, and then they'd, they'd march just like we want them to. But they're human beings. We don't want them to be robots. No, you don't. So all of these things would be things that would um, lead to prov provocation mm -hmm. and, and uh, <clears throat> putting a barrier between us and our children that doesn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. We have a couple more minutes here, and we want to get through a couple more. Um, using media as a babysitter. Be so careful, right? Um, I know there are times in a day in which a parent needs uh, alone time or downtime or um, they need a minute, you know, to do something, a meeting or whatever. What do these kids do during this time? And I would just be cautioning all of us to be so careful that we don't just stick a device in front of them, a phone, a tablet, or whatever. And certainly um, the type of media TV, does matter, but yeah. especially for the young kids, simply any media watching the screen shuts the brain off and uh, is going to hinder development. Yeah, and they can't learn to be creative. They can't come up with things to do on their own. Kids are um, creative on their own, so don't squelch that. Okay. Um, pressuring children to live our dreams and goals. Mm. I always wanted to be this, so I'm going to pressure you as my child Trying to, to live do this. out <laughs> your dreams through your kids. Right very dangerous and very harmful to them because they need to be able to do what God has called them to do. And right. we want that, don't we? <laughs> I think we should want that. And, and we'll end with the last one. Yeah. Making sure we take enough time with our children. Um, they're to apprentice us, to come alongside us and learn. Um, do we have a good verse for that? Yes, we, we do. We have an excellent verse for this. Yes, Deuteronomy do. 6 verse 7. Thou shalt teach them mm. diligently, speaking of God's law and his words, teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. This is all throughout the day. That's what that shows us. It's a picture of living life with your children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we encourage you to do that. And hopefully they've learned a few things. Hopefully we have too <laughs> from this. We were reminded of a few things as we... We, as we put this together here. Yes. Well, God wants your family to be a family of faith. He has mm -hmm. promised that you can be, and he's promised to help you do that. So we want to leave you with the encouragement to keep building your family of faith every single day. Families of Faith is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Find us online at www.pathwaytoparadise.org.